In one way or another, everything on Pandora is leading you to a vault. Yeah, this place is a garbage land of sand and sadness. You know, I thought today was gonna be boring. Yeah, I know, I'm your hero, you're my biggest fan, blah, blah, blah. You're acting kind of weird, Reese. These are the types of stories we'll tell our children when we're billionaires. Hold on to your foot. I'm gonna say, 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 I'm g
parents and right around to my parents and house so I can get my first sleep. And we are going to the next. <laughs> no! Woo! She told me. She told me. She said, help me. He said, help me. Help me. Oh, I got oh, pain. <laughs> That's what he said? No, that ain't what he said. That girl's on my heart. She likes me. Oh, oh, you can throw that cameraman. Alright, go ahead. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. It's funny. I'm going to need to go find it. Why the fuck did you stand there and do that shit? Yeah. Yeah, some fool died. Somebody died. Somebody got shot. And it just so happens that she was still with And you know how they all come looking for you. That's, she puts me in the mind frame of the girl who was on trial to trade my Martin's friend. It was all like, no. <laughs> She stood there and pissed at herself on television. Wait! On television. Now listen, I've been running these streets. Not TV. Television. I want to give a shout out to Loretta Lynch because she's the first African American Attorney General. Is she the first female Attorney General, period? No. Oh, yeah, wrong. She's not the first African American Attorney General. She's the first female African American Attorney General. Well, there's some people out there that like to get you together for the same thing. Get you together for saying one thing wrong and do what you want. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, she's the first female African American attorney general. Now, your question was is she the first female attorney general? Yeah. No, remember, um, who was the first female? Uh, it wasn't, no, Madeline Albright was the Secretary of State. Uh, I think it was that other lady, uh, Keep talking about like Catherine Harris for Bush. Attorney General? No. no. Who was she? I don't know. I've never even heard of her. You never heard of Catherine Harris? But with the man Catherine, somebody, and she was the one that made it official that George Bush won in Florida. Was not her Attorney General at all. Uh, I was just. She was somebody. She attorney was like General. He. he that Eric was Golden, the Attorney General for Bush. They get rid of Eric Golden. They tied his ass, and he's tied them, so he's sitting stepping down. And then they find somebody. And, you know, I watched some of her. Um, oh, that's. I knew I couldn't. I kept confusing her face with Elizabeth Warren, but it was Janet Reno. Janet Reno. The white lady wow. with the glasses. Remember, she fainted a few years ago. She had fainted on stage or something like that, whatever the case may be. That's who it was, Janet Reno. And she was under Clip, not Bush. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. But anyway, you know, I remember watching some of the confirmation hearings and stuff, and they were really the fuck out of her. And I mean, I don't understand how people can sit there from 10 o'clock, take a break around 1, then come back and be sitting there at 6 o'clock answering questions. And then what they do is they ask you the same question, but flip the shit around. Like, you know how you be taking them tests online for a job? They What they really do is ask you the same questions over and over. Depends on if you have enough common sense to answer it the right way every time. You know, but you know, it just seemed like they really didn't want her up in there. And I was wondering how long does it take for confirmation? Because this was like maybe two or three months ago when I was No, watching. I think it was well prior for that, but I think it said something to where it was like five months when they because Garrett Holder had been announced that he was leaving. Mm -hmm. And um she's been well, to go back to the question part, they do that, and that's why I like watching the confirmation hearings when it has when it comes because they do it with a lot with all of the um, people that the president will nominate to be the next secretary of state, attorney general, so forth, whatever. They do that just to make sure that they're qualified and equipped for the job that they have. Naturally, yes, it was a little strange that she would have to wait this long 
was, but of course the Senate had their whole thing was, you know, they had to get this information, that information, and then during the holiday season, because they went on break during Easter, and they was on break, because, you know, for them, they get like two or three weeks for certain for holidays and things like that. So and that all played into account, but I do believe that it, it was a disgrace. Like President Obama said, it was a disgrace that they made her wait this long to confirm her. It should have, it should have never waited this long. But guess what? At the end result, she won. She got, she got confirmed, and they said, yeah. Well, yeah. So she got what two years, less than two years to be in the um in that position. Be in that position. Mm-hmm. But congratulations to her, nonetheless. Yeah. yeah. And um, you know, Catherine, Catherine, I don't know, it's a Catherine out there that probably need me or somebody. Yeah. yeah. But hey, hey, Catherine, how you doing, Catherine? Um, Jada Pinkett. Now, Jada Pinkett wrote a Facebook post. Now, I happened to read this on my Uber ride to my house, so it's fresh in my mind. Now, I I do disagree with Jada Pinkett, but she was saying that she was she was happy that Hillary Clinton is running for president, but she's not sure if Hillary is going to get her vote because she was saying that she wasn't sure if Hillary Clinton stands with black women. She was saying, like, you know how, how can I say it? It was, it was an issue with women, saying, like, how, she was saying, back in the day, the North white people, they were afraid to stand with black women because they didn't want the women down South to look at them funny. So they, they were for the same things, but they just wasn't, they took all the other races with them, but not the black women. They stood side by side with them, but not the black woman, because they didn't want the women from down south to look at them funny. She was saying, like, how can Hillary Clinton, as a leader, bring, bring black women and white women together so that we're all on the same page when it comes to the feminist movement and things like that? She was like, if Hillary can prove that, then, you know, she would, Hillary would have her vote. But my thing is this, when you are voting for someone to be the president of the United States of America, you can't just look at it from black and whites coming together. You have to look at all the things that they stand for, all the things that you stand for, and if they match with how you go for, then you should vote for that person, not based on, oh, because she's a woman, she's going, to, she's supposed to bring all the women together, and if she can't, I'll vote for her to be president. That's not what all the president's job and titles, but I understood she was coming from. I just did not. I just did not agree with her Facebook posting, and and I wouldn't want her to get that message to other women out there. That's the reason why you vote for a president. It's kind of like saying, "Oh, I'm only voting for Barack Obama because he's black," and that's what a lot of people did. Nobody knew he stood for no. We're not saying nobody. A lot of people didn't care about that. All they cared was that. It's a black man running for president, and we're going to vote for him because we've never seen a black man in power. But I think you should look at all all the issues that they stand for before you say, you know, hey, I want to vote for this person, not just oh, because he's black, I'm gonna vote for him. So I I I I, I agree with I I see where both of you are going. I see what you're saying, and I see what Jada thinking. Just to piggyback on what you said about Barack Obama, I felt the same way, and I still do feel the same way, that a lot of people shouldn't vote for somebody because of the skin color or whatever the case they mm-hmm. But you know what? Over the past, and I, I, I don't want to get nobody, I still feel that way. I think that you should definitely know the issues of what they stand for. But over these past few years that Obama has been in office, I've seen a lot of African Americans, particularly older African Americans, you know, in their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and even older talk about how, why it is that they voted for President Obama. And they talked about um, the fact that many of them were offended at the fact that people like us said that they shouldn't vote for him because he's black. And I saw this one man who was in his 80s say, I don't like for somebody to tell me that I shouldn't vote for Barack Obama simply because he's black. He said, well, all my life I've been seeing white men, so why can't I vote for him because he's black? And that kind of struck me because I said, well, you know, I'm not in my 80s, so I can't necessarily speak from that standpoint. But I got what he was saying. You know, his message was, that's all I've seen from this country. And if if I see somebody who I feel as though can run this country, and if he just happens to be black, and if that's the only thing that I know about him, 
is him being black? Then I'm going to vote for him. I see where Jada Pinkett is going with this because she wants to make sure that black women are not <clears throat> excluded from this 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 feminist movement with women. Because a lot of times you see even going back, and you know what? This is going to go right to our next topic with Monique. I'm going to make sure it does. Because Jada Pinkett is speaking about the women's movement and the feminists and how, you know, women are not being paid equally and how white women are getting paid more than black women when they're all doing the same job. I get what she's saying. <clears throat> and when you have, <clears throat> excuse me, a strong candidate like Hillary Clinton, a female strong candidate like Hillary Clinton, you want to make sure that she stands for everything that you are fighting for or that you want to see change. Just like when Barack Obama was running for president, a lot of African Americans felt, now that we have somebody that looks like us, he's going to understand the issues and the needs that it is that we are fighting for, or that it is that we've been trying to get these white men to fight for, but of course they weren't fighting for us like they should have been because they don't know the issues that we've gone through. So that's basically what Jay is saying. I want to make sure that you as a woman can bring not just not just white women, but white and black women together. And it goes back to Patricia Arquette at the Oscars. Now, I just watched this interview, and I have to say, and I'm going to say this, I'm going to publicly apologize to Monique, because a few videos ago, Kevin and I, we gave our opinions on this whole black ball issue, and we, you know, we said how we felt. And we gave our opinions on this empire issue, and whether or not Monique was, you know, actually asked to play the role of cooking. And I'm going to publicly apologize because I watched the interview that she did with Sway up in New York. And Monique came with her receipts. She made sure that she let the world know this, I'm not difficult to work with, and I never said that I was blackballed in Hollywood. Lee Daniels was the one that said that I was blackballed in Hollywood. She said, I never said it. He said it. She actually said, to the contrary, I was actually still getting roles after I won the Oscar. Many people believe just because they didn't see me in any movies that I wasn't getting roles. She said, but I actually was getting roles after the Oscars. Her problem was the roles that she was getting after she won the Oscars were roles that were being, the roles that were being offered to her was as if she had just made it to Hollywood. That they weren't roles for somebody who had just won the Oscar. And she felt as though you wouldn't hand these type of roles to somebody like Meryl Streep who just won an Oscar. I just won an Oscar, so why are you handing me roles and for roles and for money that I was making when I first started out in this business? They actually they were asking her to take a step back rather than go forward as if she was an Oscar winner. And I got what she was saying because she spoke about Patricia Arquette. She said this woman stood on the Oscars and she spoke up about women's rights. She said I was so happy that she spoke up about it. She said, but when she said it, she got a standing ovation. But when I refused to accept these roles that would limit myself, I was called difficult. She said, what was it that I said by saying no to these roles that was any different from what Trisha, Trisha R. Kepp was doing? She said, because basically, I was saying to y'all, you can't make me feel as though I'm just a newbie. Like, I don't know what's going on in this business. But I don't know what I think. Because I'm... Well, hold on. Let me just finish. Let me just finish. Another thing with the whole Empire situation, she said... I actually was supposed to play Cookie because she wasn't. Well, I'm just saying. She, she, you know, she pulled out the she pulled out the emails where Lee Daniels people had emailed her and Sway read the emails and where the one woman said to her that Lee Daniels, you know, wants her to play the role of Cookie and they wanted her to come down and do a screen test yes. for this role. For whatever reason, she didn't. I can't remember why she said that. They, I think it was some legal issues or whatever the case may be. And so, at the end of the day, the networks and the producers decided to go with Taraji P. Henson, and she said she was happy for Taraji. She said, but when it came out that she was supposed to play Cookie, it was made as if she was lying when she said it. She said, because Lee never came to her defense to say, no, that's, it is true that I did want her to play Cookie. She basically said, Lee Daniels said nothing with this whole situation, and she wanted him as a friend and as her brother to speak up and just tell the truth. That's what she wants. She says she doesn't have any problems with Lee Daniels. She loves him. She wants to speak about it. And she also told Sway because Sway asked her about the emails. And she said, we actually sent these emails to him to let him know, hey, look, this is what was being said. Do you remember this? 
And just to let her know that we are now going to make these emails public because you haven't come out in our defense. And she said when she sent them the emails, he never responded back to them. So this is why she's making it public because she wants the public to know, yes, I was considered for this role. And Lee Daniels himself considered me for the role. That's why they wanted me to come and do a screen test for Cookie, but for whatever reason, she never got the part. But she wanted to make it clear that she never said that she was black ball in Hollywood, that she was still getting roles in Hollywood, but she refused to take those roles because they were roles that she would have received 10, 15 years ago when she was first starting out. She said, I just won the biggest award in Hollywood. Why would y'all think that I would accept this and the pay rate? Let me tell her, let me tell her why. And Monique know I love her. Let me tell you something. Monique has never played a leading role in a movie. Mm -hmm. If anything, she's always been a supporter. And I'm really sitting here thinking like, okay, has she ever, ever played the lead? No. And Precious, no. Tickle play that game? No. And Shadowboxer? No. Um, what else has she played in? And I think she's played in a lot of comedies. Basically, Oscar Jenkins, all her movies. So this is the thing, Monique. Just because you won that Oscar, that does not mean... You can put asses in the theaters because that's where it counts. So that Oscar, yes, it has a big name, but you know these movie companies, they want their money back. They don't want just they don't just want to make the budget back. They want to make the budget plus more. And Monique is not that kind of person where I can say where she can get she's a huge box office draw to get people in there like Kevin Hart can get people up in there. That's not where I think Monique is at right now. So I don't think she can make those demands and say, well, I want X amount of dollars if I'm going to be in your movie just because I'm having an Oscar. I don't think that it works that way. And I do think that her husband plays a part in a lot of her downfalls that has been going on because there is no way you can have the number one show on BET, win an Oscar, and still don't come back to BET. Something went wrong somewhere, and I think it came down to money. She says, oh, I don't know what happened. You have to ask that belief. Everything came down to money. Came down to the money. And if, and if you had that Oscar winner that just won an Oscar, right, even though you had the number one ratings on BET, it was like half a million people, if you can't get at least a million and you want an Oscar in front of 38 million people, that's a problem. Ratings is everything. Like when you just win an Oscar. So they could be looking at it as her show ratings didn't go up after she won that Oscar. So, you know, I just think gradually if she, if she did take some roles, like maybe take a supporting role, but do it in a movie with white people because I've never seen her in a movie with white people. It's been all black people. So if she did a movie with white people, maybe as a strong supporting character, to where it was a role that people would care about her, and then you got the white people in there, maybe they would care enough to go see her in another role, and she it can just gradually build up to being being uh, a, a, a a leading actress because people when you hear Monique, you don't think of actress, you think of the comedian. But you know what? Uh, I I I totally hear what you're saying. But I don't necessarily agree, and I'm going to tell you why. Because you have to, in any business, if you get a promotion, and the Oscar is the actor's promotion, if you get a promotion, and then after the day after your promotion, you are offered these different jobs and whatnot, why would I then take a job that I'm getting the same pay rate that I'm either still making or that I made two years ago. If anything, I'm supposed to gradually make more money with that promotion. And that's what Monique was saying. I wasn't getting offered any roles that made sure that I was growing as an artist, nor was my pockets growing. I wasn't getting any of that. That's what she was saying. And it's very good for those of you that didn't see the interview. Make sure you watch it so you can hear exactly what she's saying. She's saying it because... She told one of the, the, the lady who works for Sway, she said, I wasn't just doing this for me. I was doing this for the young black girl who's coming along, just like Hattie McDaniel opened those doors years ago for her. She said, because if I didn't say no to those roles that they were offering me, just like she said to the lady, just like if you didn't say no or if you wouldn't say no, then all it would be is just another face. It would just be a new face, but they would still be getting the same Pay, pay rate. And she was saying that, and I agree with her. 
every uh, Oscar is a promotion in Hollywood for actors. And if and, and then when you stop to think about it, let's look at Jennifer Hudson. Ever since Jennifer Hudson won that Oscar, she ain't had no big role. And maybe because she's just been taking the roles that they've given her. She was in, she played the secretary in Sex in the City. She had that movie with Queen Latifah and man, Alicia Keys that I don't think anybody went to go see. Yeah, I don't think anybody went to go see that. I heard that was a good movie. And it probably was a good movie. Yeah, it probably was a good movie, but it was, you know. But my thing is, when Jennifer Hudson won the Oscar, no, she didn't really go anywhere with her career. And I can't really speak too much for Jennifer Hudson, but maybe Jennifer Hudson did what Monique decided she wasn't going to do. Maybe she just decided that she's just going to keep accepting these roles. And Monique said, no, I've been in this game a little too long to just keep accepting these same roles that I was accepting before I won this I'll tell you one. And I can't get mad at nobody who's speaking up for them because at the end of the day, I want to make my money. And I don't want you to hold me back from making my money. I know the role that I know I noticed that Jennifer Hudson when she takes those independent roles. With Lane Tire and Auto Center of Wolfbound. Get the works for just thirty nine ninety five. It was an oil job. Blue and top now, why tire rotation. Wait, say nine point vehicle check. I don't know. Twenty six days and Wolf. Maybe some people probably thought that, oh well she was singing a dream and that's why she went out. No. She can play a fucking Bro, that's just for fucking. But you know what I'm saying? And she can act. But you know what Monique said that I really love? She said to Sway, if Patricia Arquette, a white woman, is standing up on the Oscar stage and talking about how women are not still getting paid equally, she said, How do you think it feels for me as a black woman? How do you think it feels for me not getting paid equally if this white woman is saying she's not getting paid fairly? Me as a black woman, I'm really not. I, think, I really think it's her husband. Her husband and those demands. I think that y'all need to come to a reasonable amount because, okay, you, you know, Patrick Gere Pope, then he got, then he has an Oscar winner in his movie, Monique. Okay, then you was like, well, you know, we had to do something to get, if we, if he wanted me for this role. So now you took on, you, you, like executive producer or something like that because she wanted extra money from the film. I don't know how, exactly how he got her, but I know she was saying that. She wants she wants her name mm-hmm. on that film, but it's like it was it, it, it was other roles. I know you didn't get paid, and I'm assuming that they he didn't pay you that because he's still fighting to get this movie in the mm-hmm. theaters. He didn't pay you. It must have been something about their role. They made something mm-hmm. about their role. Right? So it's no other role that you ever got in these last five years that made you say, "I really need this role." And then another thing, when it comes to playing Cookie, the right Cookie was selected, and not only that. When you have to take a screen test, that's not a guarantee that you have that job. So that's why I'm, that's, that's, not, true. Keep, that's not true when, in Hollywood. When she keeps some saying of the, some of the biggest stuff, I'm sorry. sorry. I, but but some of what I was talking about. Okay. okay, go ahead. I'm just correcting you. I, I, I know. Saying, but I'm so better. I know. Okay. A screen test. To me, to me, to me, yeah. to me if, a, if a writer has you in mind, like Tyler Perry, Tyler Perry, when he writes roles, he writes roles for certain artists in mind. And he don't make them take a screen test. I wrote this role for you. But we talking so about Tyler Perry and okay. his own And listen, all right, and then listen, I'm talking about, because uh, Lee, Lee Daniels don't own five. Lee Daniels said, okay, well, he don't own five. He said, but remember, Lee Daniels he don't own five. He didn't write right. He thought of her as Cookie, right? Right. He thought of her as Cookie. Right. All right, but I want you to come in for a screen test to, for this. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean that you're a cookie. It's not saying like I was supposed to be cookie. No, you were played. You played the role of cookie in the screen test. Well, no, she didn't. No, no, no. I mean, just offered to take a role as cookie for a screen test. It wasn't. Oh, you. This was definitely my role. Me, and Fox said no. Well, let me just. I'm difficult. <laughs> Well, go ahead. I was talking. I was waiting. Because I, cause I, I know you were talking. I was waiting. I was, I was just saying. Because I need to clarify. You need to see. You need to know. But I'm just saying. You need to know something about screen tests. Mm. Screen test does not necessarily mean, oh, well, we may or may not pick you. She may have. It may not have been. Even been um, screen test. It may not have been, even been Lee Daniels who wanted her to do screen test. It may have been the studios. So whether or not Lee Daniels said yes, you are going to be cooking, or you whatever the case may be, it was up to the studios. That's why in the email they said the studio was the one who said no on you. There are some big stars in Hollywood that still do screen tests. Hell, just recently I saw an interview with Julia Roberts who said that she still has to do screen tests. Julia Roberts is ten times bigger than Monkey. 
So if Julia Roberts has to still do a screen test, why does the Monique have to do a screen test? Because all actors do screen tests. If, and, I, if I have a project, well, for me. And then uh, let me just clarify something, too. Let me just clarify something. Would, yes, I would Tyler Perry writes roles for certain actors, but that is also Tyler Perry writing, and it's also his studio. So he ain't got nobody above him telling him, no, you can't have that person. Lee Daniels had, what is it, Imagine Film, whatever the other studios imagine, and Fox all telling him, we want. Taraji P. Henson. Lee Daniels is not a head person at Fox, so he had to go about what they said because he's working for them. That's how it works. So it doesn't necessarily mean you don't have it because I called you in for a screen test. And another thing, Monique never said that she was going to be cooking. What she said was that the role was offered to her. She never said that, oh, I'm supposed to play cookie and now they don't want me to play it. She said that it was offered to her. That's what she said. That's why it's important. I want y'all to make sure y'all watch this interview. It is important. That's why I said I had to apologize. Because it was some stuff that I didn't know that I was speaking on. And then I said, well, damn. Like, wow. I, I feel bad now because I just was speaking, putting the horse before, or putting the cart before the horse. But see, Monique, Monique had a game plan. And yeah. her game plan was, because I don't care what nobody said. She used the success of Empire to bring her back into the spotlight by saying, "Black." I mean, Lee Daniels told me I was blackballed to the Hollywood Reporter. So now she, now every interview she does, she has to always talk about what happened with Lee Daniels, and that overshadows the fact that she has a role in this movie that comes out actually today, Blackbird. Don't nobody want to talk about Blackbird, even though that's her first role back. In five years, but you know what? Everybody want to talk about Lee Daniels and Empire. Cause listen, Monique, I don't see it for you. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. In one way or another, everything on Pandora. As Cookie and Empire. No. But well, listen, and I said that Taraji making her demands that if you want me, you got to bring on Terrence Howard. Because I can't see Empire with Monique and Wesley Snipes and everybody into it. Yeah, like that. Right. The shit would have been canceled after four weeks. Yeah. No, but listen, what you said about, what did you say just now about Empire and Monique? She, she used Empire. She used Empire as, as, the, what's it, as the, to get her back in there because that. But you know what it was? But you know what it was? She didn't... So this is my opinion, and you may feel as though she... use it. I don't think she used it. I'm telling you why I don't think she used it. Because like she said in the interview, she never said that Hollywood blackballed her. Lee Daniels said that Hollywood blackballed her. And I guess he made the assumption the assertion that she was Blackboard, and that's why she wasn't in pictures and stuff, whatever the case may be. But she was saying, basically, what she was saying was, and this is why she wanted. Mediocre roles, and B, why did you 
want me to be an empire. That's what she was saying. It wasn't that, that's her script. Well, yeah, but it wasn't like she was, it wasn't her bringing empire in to get attention. She basically was saying, you out of your mouth just said that I was black boy and nobody wanted to work with me. But then why did you want me to be in your new TV show? Because, listen, Lee Daniels is a friend to her. You see, she's not getting no roles nowhere else. So, shit, I'm going to put you in my shit. But see, the problem is, these movie studios do not want you because of you being difficult. According to the movie industry, you're difficult. But you know what? If there's been plenty of our subscribers that have been to your show that say that you're not one of the nicest people. Now, I can't speak for them because I haven't been to your show, so I didn't know how it was behind the scenes. But anytime you got Lee Daniels saying, okay, I want you in the butler. Okay, and they say, no, we want to put it over. Oh, but I took two roles from you. <laughs> Richard Pryor and the butler. And then they say, no, we don't want you in Empire. It doesn't take Lee Daniels. Who's she playing in Richard Pryor? Um, the grandmother. It doesn't take Lee Daniels to tell you that you're being blackballed in Hollywood. No. Your husband should have been the first person to tell you that you're being blackballed in Hollywood. Okay? You haven't had a role in five years. You keep saying, oh, we got roles, but there wasn't the money that I'm talking about. No. There's some roles that, that, that you say, well, you know what? I have to blame your husband. Like, no. I want, you have an Oscar that's sitting, you said it's on your bottom show. You said, okay, on one, on one you said that. You have an Oscar and stuff, but I think that he's probably been way too high for you. And that's why you haven't been in anything in five years. If you weren't difficult, you would, even if BET said, no, we don't want you in a night show, I'm sure a TV studio somewhere would have said, you know what, let's bring more need to daytime television. I think that you could have had so many different things, shit. You could have done uh, the comic view shit, like you could have been the host, not even just that, shit, you could have had your own comedy show with you the host when you find people everywhere. I'm just saying that you had smoke, smoke, the sky's the limit when you were an Oscar. Don't nobody just forget about you out of nowhere. Something had to go down. And when you're saying that you want to take family time, I understand that you're saying that you want a family time, but family time could have came right after you you did the Oscar season. You could have just, just chill out for a minute. You could have just chilled out. You know that's what you got to do. You got to promote these movies. You want to get paid to go to Paris. A lot of people, ain't nobody paying nobody for no interviews. Like, you have to work with the studios. They're like, well, she's not playing the game. Then we can't help her. And that's what happened. Well, that's what happened. Well, you know, know, let me just say this. Game. Let me it's just say game. this. Yeah, it is a game. But let me just say this. And I just want you to know this for this show. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to ever allow somebody to tell the Scorpion show Y'all are not worth this amount. Because if you agree to that amount that they're telling us that we worth and I don't agree to it, then you can kiss me goodbye. Because if I know what happened, what happened? If I know my word, what I'm saying, if I know my word, then why would I allow you to keep me here or drag me back here? Now, we're not saying that her husband was saying that they got to give up five or ten million dollars, because I don't know what he was saying. But if I know my word, then why is it so wrong that I am bidding for my word? That's just like, that's just like the people who are picketing at uh, fast food places. We know damn well, some people are like, I'm not going to give them fifteen dollars an hour, because some people with degrees are starting off with fifteen dollars an hour. So why would I give you fifteen dollars an hour? But the, but the point is, I'm bidding for what it is that I think that I deserve. So if I think that I deserve, let's say, if I think that I deserve a million dollars, then why is it, why am I going for bidding for that? Because you know what? Sometimes it ha you have to take a step back just to take a bigger leap to go forward. Yeah, but, and a lot of people, a lot of people look at it like this. I've done movies, I've done this, and I've done that. And then they, 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 when you see it on television, oh, she too, she's a movie star, why is she on television? Then you got people like Terrence Howard and movies, but on television, and Taraji B. Henson on television. And look, they had one of the biggest TV shows. Now, I don't know how much they're getting paid, but I know one thing. If I was their manager, I'd be fighting for more money for them for season two, because what their show did, it grew week to week to week to week. Every week. That Come on now, you went from 9 million to like 16 million viewers? Well, see what you just said? What you just said is the prime example what Monique is saying. I want this Oscar, so therefore I should be getting paid more. That's basically what she's saying, and that's what you just said. This show is growing, so therefore I wouldn't expect Terrence Howard and Taraji next season to be getting paid the same, same amount up. they got. Right, so that's what she
what she's saying. I won this Oscar, and this is the biggest award that you can win in this industry. So now, why am I sitting back? Let's just throw out there. Let's just say Monique was making $500,000. i am sure she's right now. She's probably making more. But let's just say she was making $500,000 a movie. Why, after winning this Oscar, do I have to still accept $500,000? Why can't I get $600,000? No, you shouldn't. You could. You should go there. But you know what, though? This is what I would do. Now, listen. I would take a higher pay. Because, of course, I want to fight for it. But listen, yeah, you gotta fight for it. But listen, since if they give you get that, shit, y'all fuck all these other topics. It's like, that's the same like today. It's like, listen, okay, so you win this Oscar. Now, you're not a movie star because your name being on that marquee to stop me. I mean, because it was fun. It was Tyler Perry and all of the names for Oprah and all the girls. Okay, it was all of them on there. Okay, well, me has that Oscar. But now, you have, this is how the movie executives feel. Okay, she won an Oscar, but can she put asses in the seats, mm -hmm. in the theaters? So we pay her this amount, and she don't give us our money back plus more. Why is she worth that amount? But you won't know until you give it to her. But I don't know. know that, we don't, how, how do we know that? Know. How do we know she was offered more, a lot more, but then her husband said, oh no, she has an Oscar, we want more than that. What do you mean? How do we know she was even offered the roles or offered money? more money? We don't even know. She didn't say she was offered more money. That's the thing. She said she wasn't offered more money. She wasn't the roles that she was getting were mediocre roles, and they weren't trying to pay her. Now more. listen, now she's, she's, she was now she's playing best. I mean, she's not playing best. She ain't playing more best. She ain't. She's, she's playing. Best. She's in a rough. And you know what? She no. could have played best. Yes, because she because no. I moved the no. I'm waiting for the time. What's the name that won the Oscar 1939? Yeah, yeah. I'm waiting for that movie. Where is that movie, Monique? You had the rights to it and everything. You mean to tell me you couldn't get that off the ground in five years? It's like, what have you been doing besides losing weight? And you look good. But what else have you been doing? And now she said that HBO paid her the amount that she's worth. Okay, now HBO is an HBO flip. You ain't getting no revenue dollars from that. So...
what she's saying, and that's what you just said. This show is growing, so therefore, I wouldn't expect Terrence Howard and Taraji next season to be getting paid the same, same amount they got. Right, so that's what she's saying. I won this Oscar, and this is the biggest award that you can win in this industry. So now, why am I sitting back? Let's just throw out there. Let's just say Monique was making $500,000. i am sure she's right now. She's probably making more. But let's just say she was making $500,000 a movie. Why, after winning this Oscar, do I have to still accept $500,000? Why can't I get no, $600,000? No, you shouldn't. You could. You should go there. But you know what, though? This is what I would do. Now, listen. I would take a higher pay. Because, of course, I want to well, fight, fight for it. But listen, yeah, you got to fight for it. But listen, <laughs> listen they give you get that. Shit, y'all fuck all these other topics. It's like, it doesn't seem like you're back. It's like, listen, okay, so you win this Oscar. Now, you're not a movie star because your name being on that marquee does not mean, I mean, because it was fun. It was Tyler Perry and all of the names, right. Oprah and all the girls. Okay, with all of them on there. Okay, well, me has that Oscar. But now, you have, this is how the movie executives feel. Okay, she won an Oscar, but can she put asses in the seats, mm-hmm. in the theaters? So we pay her this amount, and she don't give us our money back plus more. Why is she worth that amount? But you won't know until you give it to her. But you know, I don't know. That. We don't. How, how do we know? We know. How do we know she was offered more, a lot more? But then her husband said, "Oh no, she has an Oscar. We want more than that." What do you mean? How do we know she was even offered the roles or offered money? More money. We don't even know. She didn't say she was offered more money. That's the thing. She said she wasn't offered more money. She wasn't. The roles that she was getting were mediocre roles, and they weren't trying to pay her. Now listen. Now That's she's what she was. Now she's playing best. Oh, I mean, she's not playing. But she ain't playing a boy. Yeah, she's playing. She's an abrupt. And you know what? She would have played Bessie. Yes, because she's because I looked at. I went and thought of it. What's the What's the name that won the Oscar nineteen thirty nine? And who went? I am waiting for that movie. Where is that movie, Monique? You had the rights to it and everything. You mean to tell me you couldn't get that off the ground in five years? It's like, what have you been doing besides losing weight and you look good? But what else have you been doing? And now she said that HBO paid her the amount that she's worth. Okay, now HBO is an HBO flip. You ain't getting no revenue dollars from that. So, but I mean, they thought that she was worth it, so they gave it to so her. So, is, is HBO giving her more than what she's making a play a role in the movie? I don't know. We don't know. But what she's saying is, but it that that is never mind the fact of who. Who, if it's TV or movies or HBO, the point that she's making is, I deserve more money. Because, truth be told, Monique has been in this industry for over 15 years. If I'm at a job for 15 years, why the fuck am I still making the same amount of money that I made when I started 15 years ago? That does not make sense. And I totally agree with her. Why is it that y'all are still offering me the same amount that I was making before Precious? Yeah, Why? I need somebody to take a gamble on my me and see if she right. sell. You know what? And this is how I feel about jobs. <laughs> okay? I, I, I feel this way about jobs. You go and you apply for these jobs and they tell you that they you, you need to have about two to three year experience. Mm-hmm. But my thing is how the fuck are, is anybody going to have experience if you don't hire them to show them the job? Just because you went to college and you studied for that does not necessarily make you making you have experience. You actually have to do the job to have experience. That's how I feel about it. Just like moving over says, does nobody knows how to be president unless you've been president. Nobody knows how to be it unless you've been it. I don't care how long you've been in politics, you never run this country, so you don't know how to run it. And that's how I feel about jobs. How can you say somebody has to have two or three years experience, and when I'm willing to learn the job, you tell me, well, you ain't never had no experience, so we can't hire you. What the fuck? That's what my nigga saying. Well, how are you going to tell me I can't bring asses to the seats when y'all not even willing to give me what I'm asking for? You never know. I may be able to. They going by the precious box office. I don't people know. might be me. People might be waiting to see Monique back in theaters. You know what I mean? They just got it, and I agree. They just have to give her a chance. Just give me a chance. And it's it, it's it's sad because. As I was watching the interview, I really felt for her because a lot of people are put in those situations where, and you know what? You know what's so funny too? That she, <laughs> that she threw that old front of her so funny without saying a word. So Sway said to her, because she loves Lee Daniels, mm-hmm. and she really wants to talk about this. Yeah, they do. They need to talk it out. Because she feels as though, she don't have it. Yeah, right. 
She feels as though she don't she don't have no gripe or animosity with Lee Daniels. The only problem is that she feels as though Lee Daniels didn't speak Take up back. when the whole empire issue came up because she said, "But like, y'all were the one that reached out to me, but now y'all are not saying a word on this issue." And she feels as though if you're supposed to be my brother, then you're supposed to ride for me. And I agree, ride for your sister. And this was what Sway said to her. He said, Lee Daniels ain't stupid." Well, no, he ain't stupid, okay? No, you're not stupid. And you know what's so funny? Why are you talking about that? Kevin, oh, you are, but no, you gotta watch this interview because of what you just said. Bitch, Moni, watch this fucking interview. And I'm about to tell you what you just said. But listen, so Sway said to her, so, you know, since you and Lee ain't talking, this sounds like something that, you know, maybe we can get over involved to sit up the situation. So, man, Lee, look. And she grabbed her coffee, her tea, and she started drinking it. And it got real quiet. And they got real quiet. And they said, ooh, you were going to go over that Listen, listen, listen. No, so they said, oh, you sipping that tea? And she said, no, it's good. That's why I'm sipping it. Uh, and ain't nothing in that. <laughs> no. Because, see, remember when Monique's family was all over? Yeah. See, you yeah, know all this yeah. stuff. You know that sea man fucking with Oprah and them. Now you got Oprah taking your roles too. Yeah. Me oh. Only no, but listen. Listen. Okay, so going back to what you said yeah, about how about uh, people not in Lee Daniels not taking up her. So many, you know, she brought up some good points. So Sway asked her, he says, while you was going through this whole black ball, all this shit, did you have any of your Hollywood friends come out and publicly support you? And she said, her son <laughs> told her she was good. She said, my best friend said third grade came out and called me. He was like, you good? I'm good. She said, the only person from Hollywood that reached out to her while she was going through this was some guy. I can't remember his name, but from Harlem Nights. Have you seen Harlem Nights? I can't remember it. But she said, the guy who played the boxer in Harlem, Harlem Nights, he reached out to her and he tweeted her and told her that he, you know, told her to stand tall. And she said, she totally gets why people in Hollywood ain't going ain't to with she said because she said because years ago the whole free agent thing when that free agent came about she said years ago he was a baseball player a black baseball player who was the one who came up with that and when he came up and decided to come up with that he was blackballed. And he never worked again. She said when he died, he died broken. He died sick and he never worked again. She said years later after he died, she said that some of his former teammates came out and said that they all agreed with him, but they were in fear of speaking up. So that's why they didn't say anything. And she said that's what she thinks it is in Hollywood today. That there are people out there that agree with her, but like you just said, they ain't going to say nothing because they don't want to fuck shit up. It's sad, but it's Hollywood. Because in one token, you think, you got to remember, Monique, I'm sure in Monique's mind, she's riding this train all by herself. And she knows that there's people out there that agree with her, but ain't nobody stands in her, her defense. And it got to be kind of sad because when you know you're right and ain't nobody coming out to fight for you, it's like, well, damn, like, but you know what? This is how I feel about it. When you, and it's not just for Monique, it's for everybody. When you know that you're right and you know that what you're doing is in good cause, keep fighting for it. Like I saw this quote, Winston Churchill made this quote. He says, uh, if you're going through hell, keep going. Just keep on going. You know why? Because eventually you're going to make it out of there. And eventually you're going to make it out. It's just like when you're going through the valley and it's dark and it's scary, keep on pushing through that valley because eventually it's going to be that light. So Monique, just keep on doing you. Keep your head up. If you feel as though that you owe, that you're worth more, keep fighting. You may not ever get the money that you're worth, but as long as you keep fighting, it's bad. I'd rather you die fighting than die not trying. I wonder if Monique get paid if, if Monique get paid money, money, more money for doing comedy tours now that she has an Oscar too. I want to know, Monique. Let us know, Monique. We need to Skype you in and let's talk to you. Yeah. That would be a fun talk. Cause but you know what? She, I think, I think people like her. I think she's not. Leaving comedy, but I think she wants to branch off and do like, like, look, I'm more than just because I have a lot of hard work, work to do now. I never thought she would want Oscar for Precious. I never even thought she'd been at the Oscars. I, when I, I first right. seen it, well, I, I remember I that you said that because I was like, no, I don't think so. When I and I remember that room. you did say that. We were downstairs in the dining room when mm -hmm. you said that. I'll never forget that. That's a long time ago. Like, no, I said, his next one, going to get an Oscar and work here. I said that. Mm -hmm. I remember it so well. And it happened. 
that, well, we kind of predicted a lot of things on the show. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. We break more than what we are making. I'm way more. Well, fuck what he says. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Maybe more opportunities are going to come real soon. But anyway, well, I forgot what I was saying. But yes, you know, just yes. keep doing your thing, Monique. Yes. Yeah. And speaking of Monique and all the stuff that's going on in the industry, everybody on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta is a motherfucking manager <laughs> and can't even manage their motherfucking stuff. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to understand. Yeah. Bro. So we come back to this new season. Uh, what's her name? Oh my God! What's the the, the baby mom? Uh, me, yeah, yeah me, me. Oh, wow. Child, my name. Me, me comes back. She's like, yeah, I'm not with Nico anymore because such and such and such, such, such. He has a wife and he wasn't loyal and you know he he was just doing all of this stuff. So now, me and Stevie is cool again. They showed a little clip of Stevie like, I would never hurt you, blah, 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 blah. Just saying all of this stuff to her. And she's like, I'm going to go into management with Stevie because he has experience in the business and stuff. And maybe we can manage each other and everything, knowing that she really just wants that dick. That's what it really is coming down to. And me, me, I keep I've been saying this for three years straight. You just, your mind just don't think right because you're <laughs> dumb. Like this man that did all these things to you and you keep finding any way yeah. to crawl yourself back to Stevie J yeah. to get at Jocelyn. Okay? Yeah. You just drive any damn thing. Yeah. So you went little Kimbo artist, I don't know what happened to Tiffany Fox. But see, how you go from little Kim to Stevie J? I don't know. So Tiffany Fox, she's up in here all looking all sexy and stuff and I'm like, well now Stevie J's gonna try to fuck her. Oh yeah. Because, you know, that's his art. I mean, that's his thing. That's his thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's nothing new. Okay. Right. Don't, don't get old, Stevie J. Right. You know? So um, she's like, oh, he's looking at her and all of this stuff, whatever. And in the meantime, she's like, where's Jocelyn? Where's Jocelyn? Everybody's worried about where they're going to Jocelyn. Except for Jocelyn. And Jocelyn ain't giving a fuck about that. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and he asked him about her. Where's Jocelyn? Where's Jocelyn? Leave Jocelyn alone. Don't worry about where she's at. Worry about what you and Stevie can do for all these people since you're a manager now. And then, I'm like, how are you a manager? See, you and Cynthia on that same page don't know what the fuck is going on, but just sign any goddamn thing. Because I forgot to say this the other day, but see, you know, Peter done set up that business and ain't even tell her but with her money. And then, you sign and shit, and you let Nico take 25% of your money? Now, he talking about y'all making money, making money, Taking money from you and your children and all this and that. She tells Stevie Stevens going all off about everything. Rashida and Kurt Cole, everything is all cool and look cute and everything. Fuck out of here. That new girl that's supposed to be their artist or whatever, he's fucking her on the side too. I mean, it just it just never gets old. And they just get dumber and dumber. It's easy. It's fu- See, dumb women, you gotta sleep with one eye open on the shop. Damn! You already know you're fucking up. You keep going back to that dick. You know that dick on straight. And then you keep going back to it. Yeah. Ah, I don't get it. So then, Nico and his girl, what's her name? Genoa? Not Genoa. What's her fucking name? What is her damn name? Margo. That's it, Genoa. Margo. I was trying to figure out if it was real. That they were back as well. I was saying. Yeah. Brittany and Dumb at the same damn time. Everybody's high and dumb. Yeah, Brittany and Dumb. Brittany and Dumb. Brittany and Dumb. She is too pretty to be mad and do all this. I mean, you mean to tell me you want to stick with a man who done stuck his dick in this girl on video that made all this money? But wait, I didn't understand when she said that because I'm thinking like, if y'all have this open marriage, and I still feel like you don't know what an open marriage is, but for the life of me, I don't know what that meant. Because I just feel as though, let me tell you, marriage ain't no marriage. If you got an open marriage, wait. If you got an open marriage, let me tell you something. You better be getting checked every month. Because you don't know who he's been with. You can just go ahead and fuck whoever you want. And you know what's so funny? She didn't have a problem with fucking people. No. She just had a problem with doing it on camera. No. Right? Right. What kind of shit is that? Like, because it's not all world to see what she does. I mean, this might be a problem. But anyway. You know, so she's just, she's just dumb. Mark, Nico, yeah, I'm taking food out Stevie Kid's mouth and everything, and they get into it and fight. Like, I don't, I don't know what's going on, but see, Stevie, when you run up on somebody, don't go for their legs. Run up and hit them in their face. Yeah, That's how you, it was stupid. It just looked, you know. But see, my girl, Mama D, 
Mama D, I don't know where you're going with this singing career though. Or where you think you're going. But it definitely won't be on the stage at the Oscars. I meant the Grammys. You might make it to the BET Award. No, she's not even making it there. She might make it to the Source Award. <laughs> If they don't start shooting in there before I perform, she might be lucky to get there. I deserve it. Yes, I deserve it. Is not letting her on. Nobody's going to stay. She can't even be in the place. <laughs> but they say people were actually buying for the song. So uh, she's living off the success of I deserve it. <laughs> Shit, I mean, you can make a song. Yeah, it's not making no money. Okay, A-Town got that little <laughs> bird to jerk. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Nobody's not working no more. They just grabbing the target person and flipping out. Hey, I need to find me. You don't want to be like, we talk to no bitch. I ain't willing to be dumb on camera. You ain't getting me like that. But you could be laughing over to the back. Maybe I should. We have this stuff. We're not making the bitch. Nigga, this don't make no sense. It's this nobody white, working no more. It's this right. white boy that go around fucking with black. He go to the black neighbors <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> Snatching the phones out of people's hands. Let me see what time it is. Like, they like, what? They put this ass up and you down. No, it's a prank. It's a prank. You don't play people like that. Yeah. Then you go to the Black Projects in Brooklyn. You just don't do that for an ass whooping. And there's people that beat you up for free. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, nothing hip hop. I'm waiting for Jocelyn to come back because I missed the Puerto Rican princess. I was mad. That she wasn't on here, so I'm just assuming that, you know, she's away and, um, where we at? So, yeah. You know, so yeah. Love and hip hop, it was cute and dumb. You know, these girls just really have to do better. And I really hope that they have to know their work. Like, yes, yes. Yes. You better, I, and I hope all the band no more this season, too. Okay? Maybe, maybe they just like dumb. Maybe they can be dumber and dumber by the, by the season. You can't pay me enough to be that dumb. Because I'm going to get you together. Okay, I might, I, you might, you might get me once, but you ain't gonna get me twice. You know, maybe if the money was nice, you know, I'll think about it. But yeah, that, that was up in hip hop. It was cute. It was cute. I'm waiting for next week. Would you do a video with Nico? No. Nico's not attracted to me. He actually looks, he looks older than what he did in the previous And I, I don't like that guy. Yeah, it's just something, like it's awesome. Yeah, it's something to look like. Look at that. Yeah, everything, don't, everything that might look good don't look good. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it might be an inspired job. Like, oh! and, well, and you don't want that, uh, never mind. Yeah. You don't want that center. You don't want an expired center. Oh, yeah, that's what How do you know? Oh, no, I'm those games. I told you. <laughs> you already know. I, I don't know what to say. I just don't know what to say. Bitch! Good night! Don't wait a Good night! <laughs> and farewell. <laughs> Happy Pride! <laughs> so listen, y'all. Oh, on the bees? Oh, the bees are on there. Yeah! yeah. You're trying to... I'll get your head shaved. No, because I ain't going nowhere with you. Oh, you're saying you are. Oh, you know, so you better make sure they shoot. <laughs> oh, no, I ain't nothing. Sorry, Brad. Right. Right. Sorry, Brad. Going on during Pembroke Lake weekend. Good luck to all the high schools running. 
Uh, make sure y'all get your breasts, okay? Get your stretches in, and you know, good luck winning the trophies of Devin Bay I want to say something too because I missed um this week's Monday movie. Day. Yes, I did because everybody, you know, a lot of people are watching it, and I just want to make sure that I um say it. So I didn't. Ha- I had a Monday movie pick this past Monday, but I never got to say it. Um, so then yesterday, Thursday, um, I was watching, I was at home and I was on my local news app and we had this story about this 102 year old woman who saw herself for the first time um, dancing on film. She was a backup dancer years ago in the 1930s and 40s um, in different movies and things like that. And she had never seen any of the movies that she was a backup dancer. So this guy went to this nursing home. I can't remember why he was there, but he was like, you know, he was some guy. He went to this home and he found this woman. And while talking to her, he realized that she was in movies years ago. So he went home and he started, you know, researching her. And lo and behold, he started to find these different movies that she was in, and he found her. So what he did was, he got his iPad, and he went back to the nursing home, and he set the iPad in front of her, and got to show her her herself on film. And it was so... It was so nice, because this woman had never seen herself. She was, you know, she was remembering certain situations, and the songs, and this, that, and the third. And it got me to thinking about not my original movie pick that I had for Monday, but this new movie pick. And this new movie pick that I want y'all to go see, if to go find if you haven't seen it already, is called Fried Green Tomatoes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You see how I said you made that in? And it's called Fried Green Tomatoes, and it stars Kathy Bates and Jessica Tandy. Now, a lot of people may see the cover of this movie and be like, I don't want to watch this. It looks stupid and boring. And let me tell you something. A long time ago, when I first saw this movie, I said the same damn thing. Hold on, I said, this movie is so good <laughs> that it will have you laughing, it will have you crying, and it will have you like, oh my God. It is so good. All right, I'm not going to tell you everything, but I'm going to just say this. Kathy Bates, she plays this housewife. And she plays a woman who's going through a bit of a depression. She's depressed because of her weight. You know, she's overweight. And her marriage is, you know, kind of falling apart. And she goes to this nursing home. And while she's at this nursing home, I can't remember why she goes there. She's, um, like, volunteering or whatever. But she goes there and she meets this elderly woman played by Jessica Tandy. And in conversation with this elderly woman, the woman starts to tell her about her life years ago and what things were going on when she was a young woman. And the story that takes place, it is so good. And it also, Sissy Tyson is also in this movie, too. And that's why I decided to pick this movie, because it reminded me of the story of the 100 year woman, how the guy went to the nursing home and found all this stuff. It's so, I like how I just did that. Thank you, girl. Thank you, God. But anyway, if you have not, if you have not seen Fried Green Tomatoes, make sure you go, make sure you guys look this film up, okay? It's a really, really good movie, and it comes on TV all the time, so if you have yeah, it might be on demand. Yeah, if you have on demand, I'm sure you'll sure. be able to uh, find it, okay? It's called Fried Green Tomatoes, and make sure you guys hit me up to let me know how you like it, or if you see it. Okay. okay. So, all right, y'all. So, we'll go. We'll see y'all next week. And again, if you're looking for a church, McHale's Church, St. Joseph Baptist Church, 54 from Vine, and it starts at 11 a.m. So even if you don't see Mikel in there, you make sure you're in there. Mm-hmm. And don't go just to see Mikel. You really got to wear it. That's right. Just want to let y'all know. That's true. What did you say about what we're going on? But anyway, we're going to go. We'll see y'all next week. Everybody be safe. Talk to y'all soon. Peace. Bye. Bye. Another everything on Pandora.